everybody, Raffaele from Italy here. I'm gonna help you in creating this wonderful nuclear explosion in Blender 2.82. Before we start, I need you to understand a few things. First of all, this tutorial will apply only in Blender 2.82. I can't guarantee that if you use older or newer version, it can apply. Uh, simulation changes the result with different versions of Blender, even if you put the same values. Second note, I strictly recommend you to follow exactly the steps I indicate to you, otherwise the result will be easily fucked up. I did a lot of experiments before coming up to a solution and uh, I realized how much easier it is to fuck up everything just changing one setting, so just be aware of that. In this tutorial we are gonna use mesh emitters instead of particles emitters for two reasons. The main reason is because I find that the mesh emitters give more predictable results and a nuclear explosion has to respect a very specific shape and uh, dynamic. Particles just go everywhere creating very random shapes that are good for other explosions but not for nuclear. The second reason is because only with mesh I was able to create this rotation of the ball that goes inside, instead with particles I was simply not able. Good news for your health and your PC, I just used a domain resolution of 350, didn't use a press, additional noise or crazy high resolution. Don't use them, they are just useful to make your computer explode. If you want a good result you just need to understand how to properly use those forces. Before we start, let's give a look at the setup that we are gonna create. As you can see in the finished setup we have 5 forces. Each one of them is affecting a specific zone of the explosion. For example, the force in the floor is affecting only the ground bars. So, with all these things clear in mind, let's get started. Okay, general steps we are gonna follow. First, animate two meshes. Second, ask them to emit some smokes. Third, realize that the result sucks because it's all bubbly and fall into depression. Fourth, fix this problem by adding many local forces. So, make sure we are in global coordinates and uh, the transformation pivot point is set to medium point or active. Delete this cube without mercy and press shift A to add a circle. Jump on frame 50 and make sure that the end frame of the animation is set to 244. Press tab to enter in the edit mode and uh, select this arrow. We need to see the normal so we click here and here and we increase this. Press E to extrude and then ESC. Scale with S, then press F to fill this hole. Go in wireframe mode, press A to select everything and shift N and click on inside. Now we fix it the normal. Press tab to exit edit mode. We want to scale this mesh in only X and Y dimension, not in the Z. So you press S to scale and shift Z and as you can see we are changing the scale only in X and Y direction. Go on scaling until in the scale panel you read exactly the value 5.217. As you can see Z is still 1. We will never change the Z dimension of this mesh. Jump on object mode and press I to add a scaling keyframe. Press tab, go on face mode, select the center face, press numpad 1 to go on frontal view and go wireframe. Press tab. Select the measure tool. Now we're gonna, we're gonna put a line from the center of the mesh in vertical direction until you reach the exact value of 0 0.076. Press tab, G, Z. Zoom in a little bit. We have to bring this face aligned with the vertex of the line we have just created. The problem with the measures is that you can't see them while you are in edit mode, so you just have to continue switching between edit mode and object mode. When you are finished, you can select a vertex of the measure and just press X to delete it, just to clean up the scene. Now jump on frame 11, press numpad 7 to go top view, and take another measure from the center to the right direction until you reach the value of 1.3. 3, 2, 9. Press S to scale, Shift Z and scale down. As you can see we are not changing the Z dimension but only the X and Y. You know how to do it now so just go on, on this way until you align these two. Right when you are done press I and scaling for adding a scale keyframe. Now our gun burst is expanding very quickly at the beginning. Jump on frame 0. 
you can select a vertex of this measure and press X to delete it because we don't need it anymore. Add another measure starting from the center and go right until you reach the value of uh, 0.184. Press S and Shift Z to scale it and go again with these steps. Adjust a little bit the line, sorry. So that is perfectly horizontal. And go on with these steps. All right, now they are aligned. Press I, scaling for adding a scaling keyframe. And uh, now your animation should look like this. Press spacebar to see it. It's expanding very quickly. Check that the Z dimension is staying the same. Jump on frame 240. Select this measure from a vertex and press X to delete it. Add another measure, this time of 7.445. And go on with these steps. You know how to do it now. Press I, scaling. We have added a scaling keyframe here. Press spacebar and you see the animation is looking like this, expanding very quickly at the beginning and then slowing down smoothly to the end. Press numpad 1 for frontal view, shift A for adding a UV sphere and check that the scale is 1, 1, 1. Interesting note, even in reality explosions start with a UV sphere if you see, but for some reason in reality they look real, instead in your simulation they will always suck. Press S and scale in all directions this time, until you reach a value of exactly 1.097. Now we scale the Z direction, so S, Z, until you reach the value of 0.662. Bring it up a little bit on the Z axis. You see that here we can read centimeters. If you zoom in a little bit, it will switch to millimeters. It refers to this grid line that you see in the viewport. Now you see millimeters. We need to put a more specific distance between this vertex of the sphere and the highest edge of the ground bars mesh that you can see here. We want to reach a distance of uh, 4,5 millimeters. So bring it up a little bit, zoom in until you can count 4,5 millimeters or four and a half of these boxes. Zoom out a little bit, jump on frame 10, press I and this time lock scale. So we added a keyframe for location and one for the scale. Jump on frame 7, scale down in all direction this time. Zoom in a little bit, scale more, all direction. More zoom, more scale, all direction. More zoom, more scale. Check that we have this value in the scale panels. And uh, we're gonna scale this only in Z direction. So while we are scaling, we have to press Z and check that we reach the value of 0 0.008. Press G, Z, move this down. Now check that we are in the millimeters view and now in centimeters, if you zoom out, we have to reach a distance of six centimeters from the ground bars. Press G, Z. So press I and lock scale. We got uh, a keyframe for location and one for the scale. If you press spacebar, the animation should look like this. Now, jump on frame 74. Bring this sphere up in the Z axis. Check that uh, we have these values. Scale up in all direction. And press I, lock scale. Press spacebar. And the animation should look like this. Jump on frame 120 now. Bring this sphere a little bit more up. We should uh, see 7.461. Press I and location. Press space bar and animation should be more amazing. Nice. Press shift A, add a cube. The one that we deleted without merge at the beginning. Bring this up a little bit. This cube is gonna be our domain. We have to keep a distance of 7,5 centimeters from the canvas mesh. This is just for safety reasons. Otherwise, the simulation is gonna have some problems. And so move down, G, Z. Count seven and a half boxes, or squares, as you prefer. All right. Now we have some distance. Now we need to move this 3D cursor aligned with the bottom face of the domain. 
And to do this, click here and uh, choose 3D cursor. Press tab and select the bottom face of the domain. Click on uh, mesh menu and then snap cursor to selected. And now as you can see the 3D cursor has moved exactly in the bottom face of the domain. Tab S Z reach the value of 11.181. Don't try to type this number directly into the Z scale box. Otherwise the transformation will affect the domain without considering the 3D cursor. Instead, we can do it now with the X and Y value only that we now put on 9.990. Make sure that you still have your distance here. And now it's time to think about the physics. So with the domain selected, go in the physics panel and activate the fluid domain. For now, we're gonna use 128. Decrease the time scale to 0.170 so that our explosion will uh, move very slow and look big. Jump to the buoyancy density and put it on minus 0.001. Here at 2.5. Open the fire and uh, reaction speed slow it down to 0.1. And put a minimum of 0.7. This will have uh, an effect on the color of the flames so that uh, they will not be too much bright. Activate the adaptive domain and leave it to zero. Choose the directory that you prefer for the bake. And now select the sphere, activate the fluid and make it a flow. Select fire and smoke and select the inflow. Jump to frame 15. Put the sampling sub-steps of 2. Put the mouse cursor over here and press I to add a keyframe. Now jump to frame 25 and change the sub-step to 0. With the mouse over here, just press I to add another keyframe. As you can see, we have added a 2 keyframe and the sampling sub-steps goes from 2 to 0. Sampling sub-steps are useful to fill the holes left by a fast-moving object like our sphere does in the beginning. But when our sphere slows down, we put the sampling sub-step to zero. Otherwise, it will uh, really generate too much smoke and fire and will uh, result in uh, unexpected shit. And plus, if you set it on zero, you will save a lot of time in the baking. Next, I'm gonna turn off the absolute density so that we can have uh, more randomness in the distribution of the smoke. Around Jump to the frame 17 and put the mouse over surface emission value and press I to add a keyframe. Jump to frame 25 and type 0 on surface emission and press I to add a keyframe. As you can see now the surface emission value is animating and goes from 1.5 to 0. Next activate the initial velocity and uh, insert a velocity of 6. This will help the smoke and fire being pushed up very high and far from the sphere. And uh, yeah. Now it's time for the ground burst. Activate the fluid and put it at like flow. It's, uh, we're gonna leave like a smoke and set the inflow. We don't need something sub step because this is moving slow. And we're gonna leave absolute density on for this. Initial temperature, I'm gonna put minus two so that the smoke will be pushed on the ground as much as possible. Scroll down to the initial velocity and put a source value of zero. Instead, we're gonna use a normal value of minus 0.1. This will boost the pushing of the smoke on the ground. Okay, it's better if you increase the resolution to 256. Otherwise, the result will be too much different from the final one that we're gonna have. In the final baking, when we finish everything, we will gonna put the resolution to higher levels. And now it's time to bake. All right, our bake is finished. This is only temporary, just to see what's going on. We're gonna export a, a very fast animation just to see how is going the overall dynamic. This is the reason why I put a sheet format like the MPEG. Choose the directory where to save it. This is not going to take more than a few minutes.
click on VF and VF Board Render Animation. And then you find your file on the directory you choose. And let's analyze this explosion. So, the overall dynamic is very good. As you can see, this is the part in which we realize that uh, our explosion apparently sucks. But we just need to add the forces now in order to fix these many problems that you can see here. As you can see, the general shape just look like a tree instead of an explosion. But you don't worry, it's all part of the tutorial. The upper part is apparently good, but I can assure you that uh, is full of these ugly balls that we just need to fix the, with forces. So, created a window for having an idea of the render, how it's going on. Click on this arrow and deselect the navigate so we can clean the window a little bit. And uh, for temporary preview render, I put just like uh, three samples so that we can work fast. Go under volumes and put this uh, on 50 and before the final result we are going to increase this to 150. Don't forget about it. This is useful to fight the artifacts that uh, can happen in the small render. And now click here. As you can see our explosion doesn't appear in the renders because it hasn't a material yet. But before let's place the camera as you prefer. Adjust the camera in a position where you can see the overall scene. A good camera angle as you prefer. Now select the domain and jump to the material. Select new and we create a new material. Place the mouse over here and split these windows in two parts. Expand this and uh, switch this to shader editor. Delete the principal BSDF and shift A to search for a principal volume. Plug the volume into the volume and increase the strength to 500. This is the emission of the fire. Shift A to add uh, a color ramp. and plug the color into the density. Move the black one or directly type the position. You can type a position of 0 0.04. Select the white one and insert the position of 0 0.199. Shift A and add a math node. Insert this into the middle of these two and switch this to multiply. Increase this value to a very high value like 2000. This is the density of the smoke. Shift A and search for uh, volume info. Plug the density into the factor, Shift A and add a math node again. Switch to multiply and change this value to 1.4. Shift A, add the color ramp, plug this into the mission color and type position of the black for 0 0.525. Select the white one and click on the color box. This will have a hue of 0 0.121. Saturation 0 0.689. Vector 2. Click on the plus symbol to add a new indicator for the colors and this will have a position on 0 0.912. Click on the color box and set the hue to 0 0.051. Saturation 1. Vector 0. 277 and alpha on 2 all right these are the shades for the flames now with the brown selected click again on the plus symbol to add a new color and for this put a position to 0 0.627 You can see that our explosion is coming up. Click on the color box and this will have a hue of 0 0.024. Uh, the saturation is OK. Change the vector value to 0 0.153 and alpha on 1. All right, Shift A, search for attribute. 
plug the color into the factor and in this box you have to write heat. Shift A, add a math node again, change this value to 1.9, switch to multiply and Still that we are here, can just give a check that uh, all our math nodes are set to multiply because often I forget about this. I don't know if it happens to you too. If you scroll some frames, you can see that our explosion is getting his colors. All right, jump to frame 129. Place the mouse over the value of the multiply and press I to add the keyframe. Jump on frame 50. Place the mouse over here, decrease this to 1.1. With the mouse over here, press I to add another keyframe. As you can see, we have created two keyframes. The sense in this is to preserve the colors information of the fire during the entire animation. You can always add a big flashlight in the beginning in post-production. That is realistic and is also useful to hide the beginning of the explosion that is always a little bit weird. All right, now it's time to hide our meshes. As you can see, the sphere is visible in the render, so select the sphere, go in the object panel, and under visibility, turn off the show in render, and turn off all these six settings under the ray visibility. Do the same with the ground burst mesh. Turn off show in render, and turn off all of this. As you can see now, in renders, our meshes disappear. Now, you see that uh, when the explosion is visible, Blender becomes very slow. So we can select domain, Go under the Fields tab and turn off this icon. Now you cannot see the explosion, but it's there. It's just for now, so we can work fast. If you select the domain, you can turn the visibility off and on whenever you want. For now, we're gonna keep it turned off. Now switch the transformation pivot point to active element. Shift A for adding a force, turbulence. Move it a little bit here, it's not important the position for now. And rename this as general force because this is uh, the force that will affect the entire explosion. Make sure that all the forces you use are under the same collection, otherwise they will not affect the scene. We're going to use a strength of 0.01, size 0.2, and uh, put 97 seed. Jump on frame 0, press I to add a location keyframe. Now expand a little bit this timeline and switch it to graph editor. As you can see we have added a keyframe. We want to move this force only in Z axis. So expand this and uh, sorry, select Z location and as you can see a modifiers menu appears here. Add the generator and put a value of 0.1 in the X box. As you can see, our force is ascending to the sky. Make more space in this window. We don't need it anymore. Jump to frame 20. Shift A to add the force turbulence. Scale it up a little bit. It's not important the scale of this. It's just to see it better in the viewport. And uh, the Z location is very important. Put exactly 10.197. With the mouse over here, press I for adding a location keyframe. Go in the graph editor and delete uh, the X location because we don't need it. And even the Y location. We just need the Z location. Go under modifiers and add the generator. If you don't see the modifiers menu, it's because you have to select the Z location here. Put a Y value of 9.94 and here you can type 0.05. Jump on frame 40 and in the physics tab under the fall off voice activate the use maximum and put a value of 11.4. Press I to activate a keyframe. Jump to frame 81. Insert the value of 13.4. With the mouse over here, press I to add another keyframe. And jump now to frame 250 and put a max distance of 22. Press I to add a keyframe again. As you can see, now our... As you can see in the viewport now, 
our force is expanding. We want this force to affect the sphere and the column only. It has not to touch the ground burst, right? So we're gonna make some adjustment because as you can see, it is intersecting with the ground. Deselect everything, select Z location and turn the visibility off for now. Click on the maximum distance and uh, select all his keyframes. Right click on one of these points, interpolation mode, set it to linear. And now, turn the Z location visibility on. If you scroll the frames of the animation, you can see that the force is staying above the ground burst, it's not touching it now. Only in the beginning it will affect a little bit the ground burst, and then it will stay up. We can turn the visibility of the domain on. As you can see, the force is not touching the ground burst. Turn the visibility off. Renaming this force, we can call it ball plus column force. Jump to frame 60. Put the size of uh, 0 0.02. And a very high strength of 22. Press I to add a keyframe. Increase the noise amount to 10. Press I to add a keyframe here too. Increase the seed to 123. Jump to frame 200. Set the strength to 1. Press I to add a keyframe. And decrease the noise to 1. Press I to add a keyframe. Save the project, safety first. If you scroll the animation, you can see that these values decrease. This is necessary because if you leave this uh, high strength during all the animation, you will just end up with a cube domain full of smoke. Instead, we want to have uh, a strong force in the beginning that, that after a while turns off. All right, make sure you are on frame 20. With the domain selected, turn the visibility on of the smoke because we need some references now. We need to fix the higher part that uh, you remember that has these ugly balls. Shift A, add force turbulence. Scale it up a little bit, it's not important the exact uh, scale value. And rename this to top fireball part force. It's just useful for you to remember what is the part of a force. The position is very important, set it on 10.197. Press I to add a location keyframe. Go in the graph editor, expand this. We can delete the X location, we don't need it, and the Y location too. Select Z location and jump a modifiers menu. Add a generator and insert the value of 15.220 and uh, under the X, the 0 0.05. Jump on frame 61. Go on the physics tab under the fall off menu and uh, activate the maximum and set the maximum distance of 13 meters. As you can see, this force is affecting the higher part now. Jump on frame 40. Go on the physics tab and choose a size of uh, 0 0.02. Let's use a seed value of 123 and uh, put the mouse over noise amount value and press I to add a keyframe. Insert the keyframe even in the strength value. Sorry, first set it on 0 and then press I to add a keyframe. Now, Give a check if uh, the keyframes are being recorded. Yes, they are. Jump on frame 101. In the physics tab, choose a strength of uh, 17 and press I to add the keyframe. And choose a noise amount of 6. Press I to add the keyframe here. Save the project. Crash is always behind the corner. Next force, base of the column. So I did many experiments and I always got this uh, column base going straight to the floor. So we want to break up the smoke a little bit there. We need to understand when to activate this force because the beginning of the explosion is pretty okay. The, the base column, as you can see, has a nice shape. It starts to be shitty almost in the middle of the animation and uh, it goes worse after. So turn off the visibility of the explosion. Jump on frame 50. Shift A, add the force, turbulence, and choose a Z position of exactly zero. Go on the physics tab and put a strength of zero. Mouse over noise amount and press I to add a keyframe. Do the same on the strength. 
seed 42. Scroll down to the follow-off menu and activate use maximum and set this to 2.05. Jump on frame 85, go on the physics tab and put a strength of 15, press I to add the keyframe. Choose a nose amount of 7 and press I to add the keyframe here too. Next and last force we are going to add is for the ground burst. Shift A, add the force, turbulence. Bring it up in the Z axis. We need to put this force in the middle of the ground burst. It has to stay inside the, inside the mesh of the ground burst. So, as you can see, it's uh, all, more or less in the middle. G, Z, we can put the, the value in the Z position of 0 0.035. Jump on frame 60. And in the physics tab, put a strength of 50. Press I to add a keyframe and set the size on 0 0.05. Set the noise amount to 7. Press I to add a keyframe and the seed is set to 128. Scroll down and we're gonna switch this from sphere to tube. This will make a tube selection. Activate minimum and maximum 2. We're gonna set the power of 2 and increase the minimal distance. As you can see, the minimal distance is a vertical selection that indicates the vertical area that is affected by the force. Set this to 0 0.03 and the max distance on 0 0.048. Scroll down a little bit and we're going to use the radial too. Use the minimum only. And we're going to set the power on 2 and the minimal distance to 11.99. Alright, as you can see this force is uh, very big. You don't have to make it smaller in the radius because it will not affect the ground bar somehow. Don't ask me why. Jump on frame 290. I know that we are outside the animation timeline, so this is done on purpose. Let's go on physics tab and put the strength on 0 and press I to add a keyframe and put the noise amount on 0 and put a keyframe here too. Nice! Our setup is officially completed but I need to give you some final important notes. So select the domain, go on the physics tab and press free to delete all the bakes that we have. It's very important that you activate this display now, otherwise it will not bake our simulation. Change the resolution to 350. And an important note, don't go higher of 350, I suggest to you because uh, I tried to increase the resolution to 420, but I just got a worse result. Maybe it uh, has uh, more small details, but uh, it was looking uh, too much geometric and uh, homogeneous. All right, jump on the material tab now and switch this volume interpolation to cubic. This will make a render slower, but give a more precise result. Jump on the output properties and choose the directory where you want to save the video and choose a name, press enter, and this time we're gonna set the format on OpenEXR. That is, in my opinion, the best. Go on the Render Properties panel, expand this a little bit. So we're gonna have a transparency set on 32, a volume set on 2, render samples on 100, step size on 0 0.1. Finally, we increase these max steps on 150. Check that the transparent is uh, is turned on so that you have transparency, you can composite your explosion over an image or a footage. Finally, it's officially the moment for baking and you are allowed to get a sleep, get a girl, get a family, get a house, get a job and then come back. So we got our final baking. I did two test rendered in low quality, as you can see, one from top, one from the front. And uh, I must say I'm pretty satisfied. This is the exact result of the tutorial. So your result should look uh, like this. If it doesn't, you have to check that you follow the, all the steps properly. I have some last notes for you. As you can see, uh, before the rendering, I added two more lights. If you want to give the impression of a very huge explosion, set the camera angle very low. This way you will see the hole that is inside the sphere. This is the most exciting part. Another tip, usually I go on the world properties and set this color to a darker one. 
so we can have a more realistic shadow. Another interesting trick you can use is to use this node to control how much the, the fire will last. If you want the fire to last longer, you just have to go at the end of the animation and add another keyframe, increasing this value in the multiply node. It's up to you and you can play with this. It will make the fire push into the smoke. Another thing is that uh, usually nuclear explosion has a very light color of the smoke. This is the reason why our color is almost white. Last thing, compositing is 50% uh, of the work but we will not cover this part because it is enough long. So feel free to share with me your result. You can find my Instagram account in the description. Have a lot of fun. Copy and over.